Watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. We can really guard any anybody, any team. I mean, just play together, listen to coach, execute. It was hard for us that night. You know, we all we all came out, played hard. You know, for him because he that's what he do. He'd come out, he'd play hard. We want to keep him off the boards, be strong with the ball control it, make the game at go at our pace. Keep a chip on our shoulder, don't get too hot headed, you know. We're not done yet, so we want to keep going hard and make sure we get that championship. Well, the ladies are already playing for some postseason hardware, but for the fellas, right now it's about crowning conference champions. Uh, we'll for sure do that in the NE8 and in the ACAC tonight of the Highlight Zone. As for the SAC, that would depend on how things would shake out between Southside and Wayne. Josh Ann, starting us off with your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Josh. All right, Glenn, last season, the Generals winning the SAC title outright for the first time since 1976. A win by Wayne on Friday, and the Generals would make it back-to-back -back conference crowns. But standing in their way, a Southside squad playing inspired ball after the passing of former standout Jaden Morris. That includes the Archers knocking off two way number two lures this past Tuesday. Southside of Wayne, your highlight zone game of the week. First year head coach Anthony Brewer and the Brew Crew coming off a key win over Homestead on Tuesday. But as we mentioned, Southside looking a lot sharper lately. And in the first quarter, that's Cadell Wallace putting Wayne, uh, excuse me, Southside in front early. Wallace, meanwhile, with a team I 13, but Chase is on the case. That's Chase Barnes with two of his 11 as Wayne is up by three after one. Second quarter, it's Southside on the breakaway. Javon Irby with two as Wayne's lead is trimmed down to two. But Javon Lewis pulls up for a pair as Wayne is up by six heading into halftime. Now the Generals are able to march onward and upward after that. How about Trey Dillard? Duncan one down for two, and then it's Dillard going to work again down low with a putback and punishment. Dillard with a team high 14 as Wayne is up by 17 after three. Final quarter, it's Caitlin Williams Thomas with the and one. He finishes with a dozen as well as Carrington Terry, and the Generals march on to another SAC title. Wayne takes down Southside 68 52. Uh, just we stay to our game plan, you know, we came out a little sluggish, but uh, when we went into halftime, you know, we just got on each other, you know, made sure that we held each other accountable and it worked out. It's, it's great. It's a great feeling doing it two times in a row. Just keep working hard how we've been working, uh, lock in and just be ready to for whoever we play. It's been special to be a part of. Um, it's been special to watch. Uh, we just got a special group of kids that are they're, they're so fun to celebrate. Um, and I couldn't be happier for them than I am right now. Next up, Southside is at Leo on Tuesday, while Wayne wraps up SAC play next Friday at Concordia. Glenn, take it away. All right, speaking of those Concordia cadets, Concordia looking for its fourth win in a row as they were hosting Homestead. First quarter, Homestead's Alex Graber showing off the toughness, going to play college baseball at Northern Illinois. Spartans up by three in the early going, but Concordia firing back. Max Adair. Off the good feed down low and off the glass for a pair. A little bit later, Sam Eggold from the corner. It's good, and Concordia taking the lead. But Homestead starts to get the three ball falling. Michael Roddenbush with a three. Then it's going to be Joshua Rogers from distance as Homestead goes into the cage and comes out with a win, 54-47. At Bishop Lures, 2A number two Lures taking on an 11-9 Snyder team. They're young but talented. First quarter, Snyder's Quaylen clomped in Q for two and then ties the shoe. And Snyder looking good early. Mr. Beantown, Boston Conley dials up three and Snyder up by three in the first. Lures gets it going though. West Javens finding Darian Truesdale for two. And then Damian Jackson can do more than just tackle the quarterback. He can shoot from distance as you see the senior knock it down. A little bit later, watch Zach Calderon save it and get it to Carmani Davis. And uh, Lures looking pretty good. They would celebrate the football program with Kyle Lindsay, Steve Kiefer, and Matt Lindsay as the program wrote up, made 500 wins in program history this past fall. They also get a win in basketball tonight, 66-48, your final reaching 500 wins is what I'm trying to say. 
Hey, at Dwanger, the Saints led by six foot eight senior Caleb Lehrman. He signed with Indiana Tech on Thursday afternoon. Dwanger hosting Northside, the Legends, Eugene Young Jr. with the swipe and the score and the Legends in business. But the Saints trying to turn around their fortunes of late. They've been uh, hard luck losers in a few really good games. That's Aslan Nolan with the drive to the rack. And then the aforementioned Mr. Caleb Lehrman, you can bet. Yeah, they're going to love him at the Schaefer Center as the senior with the bucket down low. But the legends simply too much for the Saints tonight. Gary Andrews and company had it going on. Rodney Jones with the three here as Northside wins at Dwenger 69-44. Last stop in the SAC, Charger Fieldhouse. Carroll hosting former Charger star Shane Merriman right there on the left. He's in his first year as the head coach at Northbrook. First quarter action, Jackson Pardon says, pardon me. The smooth lefty three, dude had nine. He's going to play college ball at Bowling Green in the MAC and Carroll up by eight in the first. More Carroll. Cannon Hauser says, I'm going to cannonize the defense. Slams it home. He had 20. That would lead all scores. He's going to play college ball at Grace. In the second, it's Dallas Lawrence for Northrop with a three. He had 14 points to pace the Bruins, but it's Carroll winning this one by 23, 68 to 45. In the Northeast 8, a win by Columbia City, and they'd split the conference title with Belmont, a loss by the Eagles to Leo, and the Braves win it outright. Fourth quarter, Trey Haichu for Leo with the stick back, but Columbia City up 58-53 with a minute 30 to play. Columbia City trying to close this one out. It's Aiden Denning to the rack, and the Eagles now up by seven. It was a free throw shooting contest from there on out, and Columbia City cool as a cucumber from the stripe. This is Stratton Fuller taking care of business. Columbia City wins 64 to 61. They win a share of the NEA title due to Eagles. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, I've been waiting to get my Leatherman jacket and get something on the back of it, a patch, so you know, it's a big thing for me. We came together as a team at halftime. We were down five, and uh, we talked through it, and we were able to get boards and get a lot of steals, work together. Yeah, very excited. I mean, this is something that hadn't been done in eight years, uh, something we've talked about, and, and this group of guys is just a whole lot of fun. Um, and you could probably watch, if this is the first time seeing us, that not one person cares uh, who's scoring the basketball, not one person cares if um, what's happening throughout the game as long as we win. I think that's what makes this group so special, and, um, you know, you can be able to do things like win a conference championship by doing the, that. So Belmont clinching at least a share of the NEA title with a win at DeKalb on Thursday. The Braves with a non-conference game at the TP on Friday against Angola. Andrew James doing what he's done all season long, and that score the basketball, a little stealing score there, as Belmont up 15 to 12 in the second. Angola firing back. You're going to see Landon Leach show off the reach from behind the arc. He drills it, but Belmont still up by two. Jack Scheiman for, uh, for Belmont coming the other way. Scheiman had himself a night. Dude scored 26 points. That would lead all scores. And uh, yeah, Belmont does share that NEA title with Columbia City. They win this non-conference game, though, 65 to 41. Last year's NEA champ Norwell on the road as the Knights at Bob Strait Court to face Huntington North. Man, this was all Vikings early. Zach Nash knocks down the three. And then you're going to see Mr. Nash Straight cash from the other side. He drills a triple, and it's a six-point lead in the first for the Vikings. More from Huntington North. You'll see Dalton Husband get the put back here, but despite Huntington North looking real good early, it's Norwell who comes back to win. They nip Huntington North by 2, 48 to 46. Armstrong Arena, the final stop tonight in the NE8. New Haven hosting an East Noble team that knocked off Dwenger this past Wednesday. New Haven got some young stars, including Tavar Baskerville. Dude is just a freshman. You saw him knock down the three there. It's a one point East Noble lead in the first. Second quarter, the senior, Ajani Washington. He led all scores in this game with a dozen points. It was a low scoring game, uh, but New Haven leading now by 10. However, East Noble, no give up. Look at the hustle right there. Landon Swagger would get the and one as East Noble chipping into that New Haven lead. Then it's Alex Phillips with a bucket for Brandon Durnell's squad. And East Noble wins a slugfest at Armstrong Arena. It's the Knights 45, the Bulldogs 39.
Well, that is a wrap tonight for the NE8 and the SAC, who have now crowned their conference champions for the season. But when it comes to the NECC, man, there is still a lot left to sort out. Coming into the night, five teams within a game of first place in the standings. We got highlights of all five conference contenders coming your way next. Plus, Adam Central won a share of the ACAC title last year. Could they win it outright here in 2024? We're going to head down to Burn for a rivalry game at the Stardome to find out. And we got the Battle of Route 49 just across the Ohio border. It's all coming your way next on the Highlight Zone. We're the Hicksville Aces, and we're the cheerleader state champ. There's more Highlight Zone after that. Hey, last season it was an awesome year for Adams Central. The Jets winning 20 games for the first time in program history. They won the conference tournament title for the first time in 47 years, and they split the ACAC regular season title with Jake County. However, a win on Friday, and the Jets would do something they didn't do last season, and that's win the conference title outright. Yeah, a win at the Stardome, and the Jets would finish a perfect 6-0 in the ACAC. Adam Central looking good in the first quarter. It's Ryan Tester with a nice pass to Isaac Schultz. He gets the two right there, and then you're going to see Adam Central on the break. Braylon Reber to Schultz, and Schultz slams it home. Dude had 37 points tonight, and he would reach the 1,000-point career milestone. So tip of the cap, because we like Ike. Isaac Schultz doing it. South Adams trying to get back into this one. Derek McKean to Titus Lehman for the bomb, but it's Adams Central winning the conference title outright. They finished 6-0 in the ACAC, 78-45. In Monroeville, Heritage made a run to the ACAC title game last month. The Patriots hosting a Jay County team looking for its sixth win in a row. Heritage hot early. Landon Leibarger, part of that run, huge part of that run, the ACAC title game. He knocks down the three and then triples. They just keep falling. Kobe Meyer from the outside and Heritage jumps out to an eight zip lead in the first quarter in the Battle of the Patriots. However, Jay County, no give up. As we mentioned, they've been playing really well as of late. Graydon Swoveland with a three of his own. That was Jay County's first basket of the night. Later, you're going to see Jay's Wesley Ben get a bucket. This one goes to overtime, though, and Heritage knocks off Jay County. 67 to 64. At the Tigers Den in Bluffton, the Tigers looking for their 10th win of the season is Craig Teagle's team hosting Rex Reimer and the Northfield Norsemen. This one was a close one. We pick it up in the first. Jaden Bear with a bucket right there. It's a three pointer as Northfield feeling good. But Bluffton, the parlor city, they know a good thing or two about basketball, and that is Caleb Green taking it in for a pair. We're going to go the other way. Northfield. Keeping it a close ball game, Isaac Burkhart with the deuce down low, but to close out the first quarter, Axton Bestie says, give me all three of these as he would beat the buzzer and Bluffton beats Northfield 45 to 38. In the NECC, three teams tied atop the conference standings at six and one in league play. Two of them squaring off in LaGrange as Lakeland hosting Central Noble. Pick it up seconds left in the first quarter. Oh man, that is a three ball to fall and Lakeland leading 10 to five. How about a little more from Lakeland? Kyle Hartsaw for the three and it's a 14 to five Lakeland lead. Second quarter action again, it's Levi Cook from Lakeland getting the bucket and Lakeland now up by 11. But Central Noble trying to chip into that lead. Oh, that's Spencer Adams with the two. But it's Lakeland winning by a final of 56 to 51. Well, Fairfield came in tied with Central Noble and Lakeland at 6 and 1 in conference. The Falcons taking on a good Fremont team, just a game back at 5 and 2 in the NECC. Fremont's Corbin Beeman to Colton Guthrie for three. Guthrie had 15 points and 11 assists as the Eagles up by four in the first. The Falcons going to Brent Garber. Yeah, he knows what to do with it. He had 12 on the night as Fairfield up by two. Caden Huffnagel with a three for Fremont. He had 20 points. That would lead Fremont, but Mitchell Miller would outdo him by 10. Check out Miller 
With the bucket here, he had 30 points on the game, and Fairfield staying in the conference title hunt with a 74-66 win. Westview also in the NECC title race. The Warriors 6 and 2 in conference coming into a roadie at Prairie Heights. Wiley Minix with the first basket of the game off the uh, little alley oop right there. Two zip Westview. Cade Batchelor says Batchelor in paradise when he's behind the arc. He drills the three and Prairie Heights now up one. Leo Hare with the hoop and the harm here for Heights and Prairie Heights with an early four point lead. However, Westview, man, so fundamentally sound and always good. That's Luke Helmuth with the layup. Then you're going to see Daniel Yoder with the bucket as well as Westview keeping pace with the leaders in this conference. They win 52 to 35. Last up for hoops, the Buckeye State. The Battle of Route 49 is Antwerp at Hicksville. Archer 16 and 2 coming in, but Hicksville trying to put a dent in their resume. Owen oh, Stuckey, a little mid range game. Antwerp, though, up by two in the first. Fast forward to the second quarter. That's impressive right there. Landon Brewer recently became the all-time leading scorer in Antwerp history, passing Jagger Landers. He jams at home, and Antwerp now up 22 to six. Later in the second, Hicksville, the Aces, trying to deal Antwerp a loss. Braden Slattery with the bucket, but in the third, check out Landon Brewer. Dude had 23 on the game. And none prettier than what you're going to see here. Landon Brewer, the senior, slamming it home as Antwerp goes on to win 65-26. Stay tuned, your Gentleman Knights coming up on the Highlight Zone. Stay right here. More Highlight Zone after this. What's up, guys? My name is Andrew Sawfrank, uh, Heritage graduate, pitcher for the Arizona Diamondbacks, and you're watching the Highlight Zone. Spring training almost here. Kind of felt like it today. Uh, last Friday night, it was winner go home time in the sectional semifinals for the ladies. Concordia's Sella Kaiser with the go ahead bucket in a cadets win, helping Concordia extend its season and earning the Highlight Zone's highest honor. As for this week, here's your latest gem of the night brought to you by Peter Franklin Jewelers. We double dipped in this one, one in Indiana, one in Ohio, white knot. We're talking major milestones and pretty sweet jams. Isaac Schultz, 37 points tonight. A rivalry win over South Adams. They go 6-0 in the ACAC, lock up the title, and he reached 1,000 points, so that's pretty good. In the Buckeye State, Landon Brewer, 23 points, a rivalry win over Hicksville, and he recently became Antwerp's all-time leading scorer. Pretty impressive. One from each state. Why not? Those are your gems of the night. As for the ladies, regional games are set for tomorrow. Eight local teams playing, two of them in 4A. They'll both be down in Marion. It's Homestead facing McCutcheon at 1 o'clock. It is followed by Snyder and Noblesville. That's at roughly 4. At the Caston Regional in 3A, we got Norwell against a real good Benton Central team. That's at 4 o'clock. Late game, a 1A showdown between Bethany Christian and the Caston Comets. Down at Lapel, it's Woodland taking on number one ranked Hamilton Heights. That's a 3A matchup. It's set for 1 o'clock and followed by Lapel and Eastbrook in 2A at roughly 4. At Westdell, Daleville and Union City at 1. That's in 1A in 2A. Bishop Lures set to take on Lafayette Central Catholic. And finally, at the Belmont Regional, it's Northfield against 1A number 2 Clinton Central. And that is followed by Fremont facing Cass in 2A. Those games 1 o'clock. 4 o'clock at the TV. Of course, Josh A will have it all covered for you tomorrow. And then don't forget Sunday, the Super Bowl right here on Wayne TV. See if former Highlight Zone star Drew Tranquil and the Chiefs can bring home another Super Bowl championship. For Josh, I'm Glenn. We'll see you next Friday.